Joining us now is a man who is three and one as a starter this season for the Washington Commanders. Obviously, he's out of Old Dominion. I yep. mm-hmm. Old Dominion mm-hmm. star, baby, the greatest player to ever play at Old Dominion, in my opinion. Yeah. I assume he yeah. has others. In my personal opinion, greatest Old Dominion football player of all time. Damn good NFL quarterback. Fresh off of a dub last night in Philadelphia, ladies and gentlemen, the iced out, jade out, Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, guys. hey, thank you for joining us, man. This is really cool of you, especially after how big of a night was last night. Saw you iced out on the plane. You looked amazing. You're three and one as a starter this season. Tell us about the win last night. Tell us about your team. And when Brandon Graham hit you, were you like, fucking game over, pal? <laughs> what was the what was the entire mindset there? It, it just kind of take us through it all, if you could. Yeah, um, kind of going back through the game. It was a, it was a complete team team effort, man. Um, we ran the ball 49 times. You know. Offensive line did a great job protecting and in, in, in the run game. You know, receivers made plays. Defense defense made a lot of turnovers. And, you know, freaking Joey Sly is hitting bombs out there for field goals. So hey. It was a, hey. It was a full. There you go. Lace is right on that 58-yarder. That's not an easy kick. How cold? Is it cold? Was it cold last night? It was, it was pretty chilly. 50, 30s. 30s in the fucking 30s last night, you're saying? I think so. High 30s, low 40s. Lace is dead right. Ball spinning 58 yarder in the 30 degree weather is a massive. I mean, that is a, he, that wasn't his only one. I think he had two from 50 plus. Big night for Joey. I'm very happy for him. But sorry, I had to stop and say that just because I want people to understand how good of a fucking ball that is. 58 laces to the right. Not supposed to be able to hit it as clean. He makes it. I appreciate you shouting him out. I just wanted to, you know, kind of tag team that thing. But yeah, 40 minutes of possession you guys had last night. That's huge. Yeah, it was huge. And, you know, a big part of that as well is just converting the third downs. Um, you know, we were pounding the rock. We are getting third and short situations. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing for us was trying to keep their offense off the field. And, you know, how to do that was run the ball and convert third downs, which we did a great job of. So, um, yeah, it was a full team effort last night. And, yeah, on that, on that last play, you know, we called it, we just called Sticky. And it was like, hey, if Terry's open, give it to him. If not, just take a sack. So in, in my mind, I was like, this this guy better be wide, wide the hell open for me to throw it to him if I'm just taking the sack. So, you know, I took a knee there and I saw Reddit coming in. I was like, oh, this might be a little too close. But then I saw Graham coming in and I was like, please hit me. And sure enough, he did. And he got the flag. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good little deal. Uh, before your question, AJ, let's run that clip because we, yeah. we broke this down earlier because obviously the refs are going to get attacked for this because this, this won the game for you guys. He is, if you run this, he, whenever you take a knee, stop it when he takes a knee. Boom. He's six yards away from here. We did the calibration for it, actually. Now, that was a weird fucking knee. Taylor, what was, what was, <laughs> what, why, was that the, why was that the knee of choice? Just giving yourself up, double knee, let's go ahead and sprawl on this ground as fast as possible? Exactly. I wasn't really thinking of how I was going to take a knee. I just knew I was going to get on the ground. So that's in your head. You're running, and you're like, all right, I got to get down here, and you just first react. Let me find <laughs> jump down on it. <laughs> Yeah. It's amazing because I think you baffled Graham. Like I yeah, think it yeah. was like a, a little bit of a baffling. Did the whistle come quick? You think? Or do, I don't remember how quick the whistle was. Was the whistle there? Well, I remember I was on the ground for a good bit, and you know he came in, came in hot and got me. And right when he hit me, I looked at the ref. I was like, Yo, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I saw him reach for his. Is that something? So. Got AJ Taylor. Sorry, is that something you guys practice? Do you actually practice a play like that? I, I would imagine you you would want to. Hey, if Terry's open, I'm going to give it to him. If not, I got to get down and take a sack. I guess it's much more safe for the team to go down and not sit there and just absorb three guys hitting you and worry that they might strip the ball from you. Is it something you guys work on? No, it's not. You know, right before that play, uh, Scott was in the, in the on the headset just saying, "Hey, uh, we're going to call this play. If Terry's open, throw it to him. If not, just take a sack." And I was like, "All right." So um, he wasn't open. He wasn't open like I wanted him to be open. So I kind of tried to waste a little bit more time off the clock by you know just scrambling a little bit and then just getting down. So again, you know, it's they made a little mistake and. You know, we're kind of happy they did it. Yeah, I think, like, refs, obviously, everybody, you, you talk to former players and fans, are like, got to let them play. But also, like, there were six yards from when you gave mm-hmm. – you gave yourself up in a weird fa- – I mean, <laughs> I don't know what I would do either. I don't In that situation, I don't know what I would do, so I can't judge you. But you took a knee, clearly. He was far – I think he just – competitive moment hit you. But I think watching it, the ref had to call it. I think that's how it was. You guys win a game, make a great play, and put a bow on an incredible Monday night football, which is – You know, not just Monday night, but you go back to what you did against the Colts. You look at what you did against the Packers. I mean, you guys have been on a run. You have made plays when you've had to make plays. 
You've thrown balls in the bucket to Scary Terry. And at the beginning of the season, you were told it wasn't your team anymore. How have you been able to handle this? You've been the consummate professional through this. Your locker room loves you. It sounds like your coaches love you. Why do you think like you've been able to handle this situation that a lot of people wouldn't have been able to mentally, you think, Taylor? Yeah, you know, again, I kind of just go back to where I was two years ago. Um, I was not playing ball, and I thought I was done. So, you know, every opportunity I get, I'm just happy to be in the building, first off. Um, because, again, you know, I didn't know if I was ever going to play ball again. So, um, you know, I knew they were going to go out and get a quarterback after the last season. Uh, we went and got Carson, and, you know, I kind of just, you know, took took the took my role and, and, and went with it. I was like, I'm going to back up Carson the best I can, help him any way I can, and if my number's called, I'll be ready to go. So, um you know, my biggest thing is I just want to win. You know, you know, you guys have been NFL locker rooms. It sucks losing. It doesn't matter if you're playing or not. Um, so, you know, I just want to be the best teammate I can be and, and help any way I can. So um, if they want to go with Carson next week, great. You know, I'm going to help them in, in any way I can. Hey, it's admirable, dude. You need to know that. Mm -hmm. That's like that's not a normal thought. Keep that, man. It's a weapon that you have that not a lot of people have, and you're balling right now. Connor, your question for Taylor. Yeah, Taylor, I think a lot of us have already seen the conversation with Ron Rivera after the game. Did you and your teammates kind of talk about getting that win for him and everything he went through this week with his mother? Yeah, you know, we didn't really need to talk about it. Um, you know, you, you guys seen all the stuff going on with the – with the you know organization you know week in week out we always hear something going on and you know I feel like just Coach Rivera doesn't get a break you know he he goes over to to see his mom you know at the end of her time and then you know that you know she passes away and he comes back and there's another report out and it's just that the guy can't can't catch a break so um, to go out there and, and and battle for him last night and get that win was huge for him and he just he's proud of us because. Again, you know, every week we, we there's a report coming out and we just stick, put, put our heads, heads together and, and focus on ball. So, um, you know, the guys are really excited right now. We're on a roll. Hopefully we just keep this thing going. I was going to ask you about your relationship with Ron Rivera because of the thing that you also alluded to there. Seemingly world on fire over there, you know, seemingly. But you guys in that locker room have been able to maintain the course. What is it about Ron Rivera that makes him such the perfect leader for your team? And what is your relationship like with him? Yeah, me and him have a great relationship. You know, we go back to Carolina in 2018 when I was first with him. Um, he's just a, he's the ultimate player's coach, man. He lets everyone beat themselves. And uh, he all he does is demand that, you know, you're focused and work hard when you're in the facility. And, you know, all the guys do that. So, um, and, you know, again, when those reports come out. The, the cool thing about him is he, he'll he address it first thing in the morning in the team meeting. He'll address it, tell us what's kind of going on, and said, hey, let me handle this. You guys focus on football. You know, that's why you're here. So, um, you know, he, he really takes that off all of our hands and just lets us focus on ball. Boys, uh, I think we're selling a team. I, <laughs> remember I said that a couple weeks ago before it came out. That we're, selling, we're actually now selling the team, but I'll deal with that. You guys got nothing to do. It's been incredible what you guys have been able to accomplish on the field without, I mean, it's already hard enough to win in the NFL, let alone when everything's going on around it. It's definitely worthy of a conversation. I can't thank you enough for having it about Ron. Go ahead, AJ. I guess with your team right now, how do you guys feel moving forward? I know Chase Young is reportedly going to be coming back hopefully this week, maybe. I mean, you guys are on a nice little roll there. I would imagine you guys want to keep riding this momentum. Yeah. Um, again, I, we, were, what, we, had three, we had three games in a row that we won, and then we lost to Minnesota that we felt like we could have won, that we kind of let it slip. Um, and that was a good team. They were, six and, they were a 6 and one team at the time. What, they're, they're now 8-1, and one, just yeah. beat the Bills. Yeah. And that's yeah. a good team that that's we kind of let off the hook. So um, to go up there and, and beat Philly, you know, undefeated at their place, hostile environment Monday night, um, it's huge for us. You know, the guys feel very comfortable, very confident right now. And, again, hopefully just keep this thing rolling. You guys are good, man. He, I mean, Tarek Glenn went into the ring of honor here in Indianapolis. Did, that, did you not care about that whenever you were playing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that was supposed well, to be a celebration. We got that, we got that homecoming vibe in, in high school, you know, when you get – when you're a homecoming team, the away team, you feel like you're a little disrespected. So, uh, yeah, we, we felt like we need to rain on the parade a little bit. I will say we talked about it. We talked about it. We're like, this is basically like I actually said this exactly what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Jim Irsay okay, picked this game to be a homecoming game. And I'm sure Rivera addresses, addresses with the team. But, like, Jim cut a promo on your owner, your current owner of your team, like, a few weeks back. It's like, did he pick it because of his relationship with the other owner? Did he pick it because the quarterback's going there? Was it just scheduling whatever the case it was supposed to be what it was supposed to be? And then – 
the last drive, you and Scary Terry. What is it about you and Scary Terry that's so beautiful? Last night, you dropped one in a bucket for him. He made an incredible catch. But you two are creating highlights every single week. What is it like playing alongside of him? And why do you think you love him so much? And would every quarterback fucking love Scary Terry McLaurin? Yeah, man. And he's, he's just one of those guys that, you know, the, the coolest thing about Terry is he'll even tell you that his biggest problem coming out of college was contested catches. And that's what his strength is now. You know, he worked hard at it. So, um, you know, the more reps we get together, the more we play together, I, I feel like we get more comfortable. He understands my strengths, my weaknesses, and, and vice versa. So, um, you know, whenever we get a one-on-one -on -one with Terry, you like your chances. You know, we paid him a lot of money this offseason. We paid him for a reason. And you see it on the field. He's making plays in crucial situations all the time. So um, I'm very happy he's on our team, and hopefully we can keep it rolling. Where did he go to school? Do you know? Ohio State. Oh, OH. I.O. All right. I mean, it works nice. too. This nice. guy actually wants to. He's an Ohio State legend. He's in the Ohio State Hall of Fame. Yeah. Never says that. AJ Terry, Hall, trying to yeah, speak to him. Up, trying to talk to the I guest. Oh, okay. I, you see, I grew up a big Packer fan, so I grew up watching AJ Hawk, and me and my dad were big fans. So this is this is pretty cool. What did you think about old Fifty flying around trying to cause CTE <laughs> on everybody? What, is that, is that, yeah. Hey, you're a, you're a gunslinger though. The way you play, like I I think we all appreciate. And I'll let AJ uh, chime in here, but I think you're like an old school quarterback. AJ, you feel the same way about watching this dude? I, I really get that feeling from him. Yeah, great. Like you're not scared to stay. You know, someone's barreling barreling down at you, a free runner, and you're gonna stand there until it. Uh, until the last possible second before you pull the trigger. Is that something you always had? Like, did you, did someone instill that in you at a young age? Again, man, I grew up watching Packers, so I grew up watching Brett Favre. So I, I watched oh, whoa, whoa, Don't whoa, emulate whoa, everything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, don't raise any funds, oh. okay? Don't do any. <laughs> I, we're talking on the field, on the field, on the field. We're talking football. Yeah, on, the field. on the field. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I grew yeah, up. I was watching him. He had a lot of fun with the game. He was passionate. And I remember him, you know, talking trash to Warren Sapp all the time. And I was like, you know what? This is this makes me fall in love with the game. So um, yeah, I try to emulate him ever since I started watching him when I was eight years old. So um, on, the on, the on, on the field, 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 on the field. Oh! <laughs> on the field. Ty, Ty also grew up watching the Packers. Has a question for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Taylor, it's very admirable that, you know, you said, you know, you don't, hey, if Carson starts next week, you just want to do whatever you can to uh, to kind of prepare him. I'm not in the building, obviously, but from the outside looking in, Carson ain't fucking starting next week. I think it's <laughs> your team. You're the guy. And if I'm not mistaken, I think you're making like 200K for every win. So is that something that you're, you know, telling the guys on offense, like, hey, I don't have the big money contract, all right? So we need to fucking win these games so I can keep affording these Jays that I'm buying after <laughs> after the game. And did you see the $150,000 coming around the edge as Brandon Graham yeah, exactly. when you were taking a knee? Is that, is that the exact <laughs> brink struck you saw? <laughs> now, the cool thing is, is that everyone kind of knows that kind of part of my, uh, part of my contracts. So, um, you know, like, they're all saying, let's get Taylor this bonus check. So it's cool, man. These, these guys are trying to help me out, give me some more money in my pocket. And uh, I feel like I'm going to do something cool for the offensive line this week. I, I think I might buy them all the starting offensive line some Jays, too. So Ooh! Ooh! I already got a green pair. Okay, yeah. we beat the Packers a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. You get some Jays. <laughs> you get some Jays. What? You get some Jays. What? Make sure you save your money, man. You've earned it uh, entirely. And, you know, afterwards, it feels like you and the team have – is it a meet? Because I remember you went in, and there was, I think Chase Young was pointing at the Heineke, and there was a mic'd up segment in your first game where they're like, we've been saying, like, this guy yeah. is a guy or whatever, and you bowled. Your relationship with your teammates is special. Last night, obviously, on the plane, see you all iced out with the glasses, you know, drinking water out of an interesting cup that mm -hmm. you were choosing to use, which is very nice of you to hydrate and everything like that. Mm -hmm. But that moment, what is that plane ride like back home, and what is the team like right now? I assume vibes are incredibly high from that video. Is that what it's always like in there? Yeah. You know, my biggest thing when I first got here was – Again, I'm gonna try and be the best teammate I can be. So I try and take a lot of my time out, you know, in my free time just to go around the locker room, just cut it up with all the guys, whether it's DBs, defensive line, um, linebackers. I don't care who it is. Let's let's all develop this relationship. So we have a really huge like family feel here in the locker room, which is great. So yeah, that that plane ride home last night was awesome. All the guys were trying to get me iced out and um no it was, it was a cool deal so hopefully we can hopefully we can keep this thing going whose glasses whose glasses that was a <laughs> nice little added touch to the whole thing that was uh my boy bk uh he was he's practice squad dm really cool guy but he put the cardiers on so it, it kind of <laughs> added cherry on top yeah it was a nice little bonus there the glasses <laughs> last question for you here uh taylor from aq shipley hey so 
let's pivot back to last week. So leading up into the prep, third downs are a big indication of whether you win or lose. Was it a big talking point that we need to hold possession and convert third downs and do this leading into this week, knowing what they have on the other side on offense? 100%. Um, again, we go back last week and we looked at their film and we looked at the film from Philly and, and Texans. And the Texans did a pretty good job. They got after them in the run game. Um, and ever since the, that big big number 90 for them went down, their rookie from Georgia, um, their average Georgia. of yardage per rush was 2.7. And with him out, it was 6. So we're like, hey, we have a good chance here to, to run the rock. Let's go and Colts. we just got to convert, we gotta convert third downs. Uh, if we can keep converting third downs, long sustaining drives, keep their offense off the field, now that's just good for our whole team. So, again, it was a, it was a huge team effort. Again, Joey Sly with the, some big time kicks. Um, you know, it was it was a full team effort. Proud of the guys. Hell yeah, and we're proud of you, man. Hey, we're proud of you. You know, because oh, last yeah. time we talked to you was at Radio Row. That's right. And we thought at that no. point the slogan or the song for it was going to be "We, we are, are Commanders." Bum ba da bum 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 bum. But but that's not the song. No no no. No no no. Uh, no, no. What the song is for the commander squad is actually, uh, yep, there it is. Boom. There it is. So you know the song. <laughs> so you got you. Put your left, left hand up. up. Who are we? The Commanders. You guys are jamming that locker room. Are we playing that in the locker room in the plane last night, or is it something that you guys all just know about? No, we were playing a lot of Meek Mill because you know we were in Philly. Oh. oh. So his team is. Hey, your team's a bunch of savages, huh? You guys are a bunch of dogs oh, yeah. over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that. A bunch of guys that just like to have fun, cause some commotion. So, yeah, good good group of guys. Hey, put your left hand up. Who are we? The commanders. <laughs> Stand us. <laughs> Who are we? The commanders. What a banger. I remember the first morning I heard this song. Yeah, play changed it. my life. Play that shit again. Thank you, Wale. Played it 10. I don't know if Wale was a part of it. <laughs> what? Once again, I do not know if Wale was a part of it, but shout out to the creators of said we are the commanders. Oh, goody. And shout out to you, uh, Taylor, because you're a story of the American dream, pal. You have a great mindset. You have a great attitude. You're a great teammate. And you're great on the football field. We appreciate the hell out of you for your time today. Enjoy the rest of your day, pal. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. What do you have for us today? Anything cool? What are you doing? About to put a couple zins in and go home. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah. Fucking <laughs> dog. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, Taylor out of here. Yeah. Oh, man. I Fucking love Man. that guy. Yeah, that's, that's my farm. Yeah, he's a <laughs> On the field, on the field. On yeah. the field. Yeah, on the probably course. gonna zin again. <laughs> I am a sinner. <laughs> every, uh, every game day that we go to, except for this last one, because we're in the middle of a storm in a stadium. Yeah. We do the show live. You know, I do the show, and then once I get off the show, to get to where I have to go, I always have to walk through, like, all the people that are watching the show. So if people are going to come out and hang out and watch the show, there's no sound. So they have to watch on their phones. They're standing behind me watching it on their phones at all these game day things. So if they come out, like, I, I feel obligated to talk to literally every person there. The amount of zins that I've signed. Mm. Every single place I go to, I sign. Pat, Pat, sign my zin, Pat, please. Sign my <laughs> fucking zin, please. Then, you, oh, you're signing the zin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I always write, like, on there, like, hey, have a good time here or whatever. And then mm. I sign it. They're like, yeah, sign the zin. For those that don't know, zin is basically a tobacco pouch that doesn't have. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's basically just nicotine. Yeah, it's a nicotine pouch that doesn't have tobacco stuff. in Chris. it. Chris. And people love it. People mm -hmm. love it. Good for him. Don't kick, you start with the jaw. jaw. Yeah, he kicked the jaw. No, yeah. He's, yeah, he probably was big-time jaw dog, I would assume, and now he's trying to kick it. He's on the zin. Good man. Getting better. Getting healthier. Yep. Here you go, Taylor. Put a couple zins in and <laughs> head home. <laughs> head home. <laughs> Out of here. That's awesome. So I didn't want to bring it up whenever he was on. Uh, if you heard me talk about how he had water mm. in an interesting cup, mm -hmm. he did. He had a plastic cup that actually had a bush-like can wrap on it. Yeah, I'd never seen that before. Yeah, so he yeah. was drinking water and Gatorade out of an interesting cup last night on Classic. a flight home. And yeah. I didn't, we didn't want to show that in the photo because we don't want to get anybody to get any wrong impressions or in trouble or anything right. for having that potentially on a National Football League plane. But we all know that they have those cups everywhere. 
Yeah. yeah. And if you're a starting quarterback in the NFL, you're going to use that bush light cup that looks like mm -hmm. it can just because it makes you feel comfortable like you're back home doing what yep. you got to do. And then water's put in there. Gatorade's put in Keeps there. Keeps your water extra cold. Boom. Yeah. 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 It's, like, it's like a liquid death can, yeah. but it's yep. a cup. Right. And it has bush light designs on it. Yeah. I've seen other designs on that. Sure. That's clearly what he was drinking. Yeah. yeah. It, just from my eyes, first time I saw it, I was like, oh, that's one of those cups that probably has water or Gatorade in mm -hmm. it so he can rehydrate himself. Right, AJ? Isn't that what you thought? Yeah, that's what I mean. That's what all QBs do. I feel like on the way home from big yeah. wins. That's yeah, how like, they hydrate. I've seen like wine bottles that look the cups that were like that look like wine bottles. Yeah, yep. and then when you poured the water in, it would turn like either red mm -hmm. or like a yellowy Clear. color. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a mind trick. Almost. Yeah. yeah, and it's like yeah. oh, that's a cup. Chris Angel. They're yes. exactly. They're mm -hmm. rehydrating. I've seen people do it in like. Like Crown Royal, yeah, like sure. whiskey bottles, yeah, like whiskey, cups yeah. that yeah. look like whiskey yeah, bottles. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. seen that on planes before. I've, I've seen, I think I've seen a lot of the Bud Light cups. Obviously, yeah, yeah. a lot right. of the Bud yeah. Light cups. Popular. Most of them. Yeah. So I, vodka. I think there's a vodka cup, tequila cup. I think there's a tequila yeah. cup. Right. All, all these things. Yeah. But whenever you Way. look at that, it's not alcohol. No, no, no. That no. is that is them hydrating with different cups mm -mm. to make them feel as if they're fitting in with their friends who would be drinking these types of things yeah. in these exact moments. If you win a massive game mm -hmm. over an undefeated team, your friends that are your age and humans that have brains and personalities uh, would normally enjoy a beer or something like that. But can't do that. He knows he can't do that. Professional athlete. Right. So he put what they, they started making these cups. AQ, well, it was like middle of our career, I think, is when he started making these cups. Yeah, it was about that. Yeah. No, no, no. It's been actually. Since 1966. Yeah, I think these oh. cups have been it's around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I thought you told me you used to have to go get the industrial size crown for cups. all Cups. Yeah, crown the industrial cups. crown well, royal the bottle crown cups. cups. Yeah. Yeah. Cup. yeah, they were cups. Yeah. They look like bottles, but. You take the top off, you see that's Empty. just a cup. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you could put anything in there for usually water, yeah, like Gatorade. Water yeah. Soda. Pedialyte. It's a good yep. gift. I thought yeah. he had the new exclusive bush water. Because that, that was Dude, my That's good thought. as fuck. Have you had it yet? Well, no, I've heard. Maybe that maybe that's what that was. I don't that's know. That's what I thought. What we've been told is so good. Because it potentially was uh apparently hmm. No. A bush light. Apparently. Son of a bitch. Apparent, no, no. Is it no. clearly? Is it clearly, though? No, no. We, we're saying it's water, but there's yeah, others okay. that are Thank saying God. that that wasn't water. Uh, there's, I guess, a little bit of potential. Yeah. There's some something going on, potentially. So those that are uh, wondering why we didn't mention that in our conversation with said person that was in the video holding the bush light cup mm -hmm. that had water or Gatorade in it right. is because we didn't want to put said person in an interesting predicament because I guess there is a potential fallout ripple effect on that particular plane in that particular league is well, what is I'm, being said to me, which I did not know was a rule until a minute and a half before we went live with this uh, guy who had the bush oh, light yeah. cup with water in it. I did not know that. You knew that? That changed. I don't I don't know how many years ago it changed. They used to serve the coaches in first class, and then they had to stop that eventually because they don't want people getting DUIs on the way home. They land, and all of a sudden guys are slopping their way to their car and driving home. Yeah, I think now is the right time to make that roll when Uber and things like that exist. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, certainly. And you know, typically, you know, guys who weigh like over 200 pounds, if you drink one light beer, you will get a DUI. So that is why all these NFL teams mm -hmm. have these cups that look like all these alcoholic beverages. It's nice to know that the commander's cup of choice is a Bush Light beer can yeah, cup. Yeah, that's sweet. That's awesome, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good, for that. Good to know. So, so thanks for hydrating yeah, last yeah. night. Thanks for being a role model.